Hey, what's up everybody? So, I wanted to make a video solely on triggering an IoT relay with the VFD because I've had some people ask and once again, I don't really have a format to this video. I just want to go through some things. Um, it's very easy to hook up and there's a couple different ways on maybe how you want that to turn on. So first things first, there's no power to the IoT relay or the VFD. Well, I have the switch off. I'm using the IoT relay to actually power the, uh, the VFD on the always on uh, outlet of it. It's a good thing to have a multimeter and check just to be 100% sure. So. There is an F, B, F, C, and F, A. Those are the contacts for uh, the relay. There's a common, a normally open, and a normally closed. And just to verify, because I noticed in the manual, it's confusing. So F, B, and F, C are normally closed when no power is on this VFD. You can see that there's, well, those are going straight through, but FB and FC, yeah, FB and FC are normally closed with no power on the VFD. So I'm going to let this boot up, but I'll show you. So here's those terminals on the diagram there and you know it's saying that FB is your three or is your up to 30 volt DC essentially kind of like a, your common input and then F, FC up here is like your normally open contact well that's not the case that's not the case with this it's kind of flip floppy but easy to check with the with the multimeter so <clears throat> what you got to do is so setting PD I'm just gonna go I'm gonna go to uh, okay right here PD 052 FAFBFC input function it is factory set for setting number one. So essentially, when the VFD gets a run command, the relay will act. It will close, and then your IoT relay will come on. Your IoT relay will only switch on if you have power on it, if you have this on. So if you don't get your little green light here saying that the IoT relay has clicked on, it's because you don't have, this light's not on, you don't have power on. But, so you could, I mean, you could set it to one. So essentially, as soon as this gets a run command, uh, the IoT relay will click on. Actually, I'll go to program, that was 52. I have it set for eight. I'll I'll tell you why in a minute. So as soon as I give this a run command, you can see. I mean, we're not spinning because I'm I'm on the dial right here, but it's just acting on a run command. As soon as I hit stop. We're, we're out so if you were using that to power dust collection or using this to turn on your water cooling which I kind of want to say I wouldn't suggest that I would want to know that my water's flowing before I would I would have my water flowing as soon as you turn the VFD on before you go running any programs, before any of that, I would want to know that my water is flowing. 
but it's all up to you. That's just my personal preference. I think that this is a good option for maybe turning on like a shop vac or something, but that that's about it. But that's like again, uh, that's that's my personal preference. Another way that you can turn this on. Oh well, let me show you how I'm I'm turning in the, this on. So you can see right here, 24 volts. That 24 volts is DC 24 volts. So it comes into FB, which we'll just call that. That's the common. And then FA is normally open. So when you trigger the relay, FA and FB closes, which takes that 24 volts through this jumper, through the relay, and then out on this wire. This is the this is 24 volts going over to the positive of the IoT relay. The DCM is your digital common and that goes to the negative side of the IOT relay. What, what I've done is, let me set this back to eight, and I will show you what eight means. Okay. Eight is Uniform frequency one reach. The contact will act when the output frequency of the inverter reaches the designated frequency that is set by PD060. So let's go to PD060, uniform frequency one. Your setting ranges from zero to 400 hertz, which is the maximum frequency of the inverter. So, let me open up my calculator. So an easy way to figure this out, was, so let's just say that, and, and I did this in my previous video that kind of went over a couple things. Let's say, you know, you don't want your spindle and your dust collection to come on at the same exact time, just to try to lighten the inrush current that the the, the circuit that this is all plugged into, you know, to, to lighten the load of just one, one inrush current that could trip a breaker or something. So let's say you want this thing to start ramping up. And maybe you want the dust collection to come on when this thing reaches 8,000 RPM. Well, it's simple. You take 8,000 divided by 60 that's 133.3333333 hertz I will show you what I have sixty set to 133.33 hertz now watch I'm gonna turn my dial all the way down I'm gonna hit run my dial's not, I, I have no, no RPM going, but watch the light when I get to, I don't know if I, I can't really get these both in the same frame. I'll just get, I'll try to get close to 8,000 RPM. Still not on yet. There we go. We're at 8,000, a little over 8,000 RPM, and now our light is on. We've got power now on these two two outlets to turn to turn something on. And then as soon as I press stop or get below 8,000, we're off. As soon as I get just a hair above 8,000, we're back on. Okay, on, press stop, we're off. It's as easy as that. You're using 24 volts from this to come out and into the common side of this relay. That 24 volts comes out when either the run command's on or whatever you set 
whatever you set PD052 to, because there's 32, there's 32 different settings, but a lot of these you are not going to use. You can, this relay will act dependent on whatever you want to use to make it act. Um, it's it's that simple, and it's just a jumper wire. This is essentially the DCM is a negative wire. 24 volts comes out into that. Out of that, when the relay acts and turns this on. All there is to it.